Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So today we're not going to be discussing movies or YouTube videos, we're going to be discussing urban legends. I was scrolling through TikTok the other day and a video came up on my feed talking about urban legends. I was thinking were there any urban legends that actually turned out to be true? And after some research, there are actually a lot of urban legends that either became true or were true the whole time. So I will be reading off certain websites, but every single website that I read from in this video will be credited in the description because that is the most important thing to me is that people are credited. So per usual, I'm not going to waste your time in this intro. Uh, if you love creepy, scary things, make sure you subscribe and uh, let's get on with the video. So the first urban legend we're going to be starting off with is the bunny man. If you don't know, I made a video that didn't do too well, which took me like a week to watch all of these Bunny Man videos and make a video about it. I think this urban legend is slightly connected to that, but it's really not. But they do share a similar person wearing a bunny costume. So the urban legend states that in 1904, a bus crashed while transferring patients from an asylum in Fairfax County, Virginia. The patients escaped and all but one were eventually recaptured. Shortly after the bus broke down, dead bunnies started appearing around the area many hanging from the Fairfax Station Bridge. So essentially, all of this was not proven. It was just a horror story that people would tell their kids or talk about amongst their friends in the Fairfax area. But what did happen after this was in the Fairfax County, Virginia area in 1970, there was a pair of mysterious and scary incidences that occurred involving a man dressed in a bunny suit, giving merit to what was a campfire story before. A young couple was taking a nighttime drive when a man dressed in a white bunny suit hurled an axe at their car. It broke their car window, but they were completely fine. And only two weeks later after that incident, another Fairfax County man discovered an axe-wielding guy in a bunny suit chopping up the porch of a recently built, unoccupied house. By the time the police showed up for both of these occurrences, he was gone. This man has never been caught. With this urban legend, there is a particular location that people seem to bring up a lot called the Bunny Man Bridge. There are tons of really eerie stories connected to this bridge, and I guarantee if you bring it up to someone in the Fairfax County area, they will say that they know exactly what you're talking about. It is that famous. Connecting to the fake urban legend, there were stories that children were being hanged from this bridge, and there was a homeless, psychotic man, like I said before, wearing a rabbit suit killing children who lived under that bridge. This bridge is so famous that people actually investigate this a lot on YouTube. When I was doing research for the Bunny Man movies, I found tons of footage of people going underneath the Bunny Man bridge. So there isn't actually a whole lot known which is true to this story, but what is proven are those two stories of the guy in the Bunny Man suit doing crazy shit. And like I say in all my videos, if you know any information that I am missing on this, please let me know. Maybe if you live in the area, you know more than the internet does. So yeah, leave a comment. That being said, let's move on to the next urban legend in this video. Now this next one is really sad. So this urban legend is called Charlie No Face. The location of this urban legend is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There is a train tunnel in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania where people say that they see a man with a severely burned and almost non-existent face. They say that if you see him at night when you're under the bridge, it made electricity go haywire with his very presence. Tons of kids around the town would actually sneak out, go into the tunnel, and try to get a glimpse of him. Now, the scariest part about this is that when those kids snuck out, they probably did actually see No Face Charlie. The thing is, his name is not Charlie, his name is Raymond Robinson, and he suffered a severe accident involving an electrical line that left him with a disfigured face. Because of this, he was very insecure, and he mostly stayed inside during the day so people didn't see his face, and he would only venture out at nighttime. And according to this article, he didn't do any haunting. In fact, he was friendly and would occasionally let curious teens take pictures with him in exchange for cigarettes. It almost seems like he was kind of leaning into the urban legend, maybe having a little bit of fun of it, but I know deep down it probably made him a little bit upset. I mean, he did get some cigarettes out of it, so... But yeah, this is just one of many urban legends that actually turned out to be a real person and be true. Now let us move on to the next urban legend. This next urban legend is called Cropsy of Staten Island. So this one is actually really creepy when I was researching it, it made me super uncomfortable. According to this tale, Cropsy lived underneath the abandoned Willowbrook State School for children. He was said to be an axe murderer, that he would kidnap children, and that he was essentially the town's boogeyman. In all different versions of this story, there was one connection, that he was a murderous creeper that was just looking for children. As you already know the title, 
It was a real guy. His name was Andre Rand and he worked as a janitor at the Willowbrook State School before it shut down in 1987. After it shut down, he actually continued living on the grounds of the school and is suspected to be responsible for the disappearances of several children. Though it was never truly proven, he was found guilty of kidnapping in 1988 and again in 2004. So I think you can put the pieces together. According to this article, there actually is a documentary called Cropsy, so that seems very interesting. I'm definitely going to check this documentary out, and uh, if you watch it, let me know. Now, let's move on to the next urban legend. Now this is just a little quick one I wanted to add because it is a little bit humorous, but it is still pretty terrifying. You may have seen those rumors that rats will crawl up the toilet when you're like taking a poop and just bite your ass or something. It is 100% true. On an episode of NPR's The American Life, an organ man returned from a fun night out and wanted to make a quick trip to the bathroom before crawling into bed, but that plan was foiled by a furry live rodent he found in the toilet when he lifted up the lid. If you have any interest in this, I, I assume you probably don't, but rats can fit through like the most smallest of pipes and holes you have ever seen in your whole entire life. Like I said, if you have any curiosity, just look this up on YouTube because it is insane. That was a short little one I just wanted to add. Um, let's move on to the next one. So this next one is probably the most famous. There was an amusement park in California Long Beach with a certain prop. Every single time people walked by the prop, they would say it looked way too realistic, that there was actually a funky smell, and there was a rumor going around that it was an actual dead body, but no one actually thought that was true. That was until 1975 when a film crew shooting an episode of the television series The Six Million Dollar Man had to move a prop because the director just didn't like the way it looked, it was just, it was not right for the shot. He asked if anybody could move it and one of the workers actually came over to move the prop out of the way. When he went to pick up the prop, its arm fell off. It's not too crazy for an arm to fall off of a prop, it could have just been a mannequin. No, there was a human bone sticking out of it. It turns out that the body was actually one of Elmer McCurdy, who lived from 1880 to 1911. He was a bank robber who had been killed in a shootout with police. McCurdy's body actually went unclaimed, and to recoup some of the funeral home's expenses, Undertaker actually decided to exhibit the body to paying customers. So in 1916, a man came along who said that he was McCurdy's long-lost brother, and because the body was unclaimed, he said, yeah, I'm his brother, I'm able to claim this body. But he never buried it. He took the mummified corpse and put it on display in a traveling show. So McCurdy's body was actually used like that for the next 60 years. To preserve the body, they put tons of coats of paint on him and varnished, until they ended up in a carnival funhouse where the TV crew discovered them. So after McCurdy's body was discovered to be a real person and not just a prop, he finally got his burial in 1977 at Boot Hill Cemetery in Oklahoma. I literally just could not imagine the kids that walked up to there, maybe even touched him, maybe even touched the prop thinking it was just a toy. It really blows my mind how many people actually walked, saw, stared, maybe even touched a real dead body. So this one was definitely the craziest, but let's move on to the next one. So this final one is more of a general urban legend than it is a specific place or state or location. So you've probably heard scary stories before of people being buried alive or maybe it was in movies. Personally, I've heard this story a thousand times, uh, Mr. Beast has done it, but I've never heard an actual story of someone being buried alive who was once marked dead. That's when the story of Octavia Hatcher comes in. She fell ill and she went into a coma in the late 1800s. Not long after her coma, she was pronounced dead and swiftly buried. Not even a week later, other people began showing similar symptoms to Octavia. They fell into a coma with extremely shallow breathing. These individuals who had the same exact symptoms as Octavia, however, woke up. Her husband started freaking out and he was worried that his wife was buried alive. He then ordered to have her be unburied and sadly, his suspicions were correct. Octavia was found dead in her casket with a scratched face and bloody fingers. The lining had even been torn from the coffin's lid, meaning she was trying to get out. She was then reburied and it is where she remains today. This one is absolutely excruciating to think about. I can't even imagine being buried alive, and I can't even put my headspace into what Octavia was going through at that time. So that was the final urban legend, and if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. I will be doing my darndest to record and edit and upload every single Wednesday for you guys, and like I said, maybe some weeks I will have two videos. 
but right now I'm really focusing on hitting that one day a week quota so you have consistent uploads to look forward to every single week. So if that's something you like and something you look forward to, uh, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, great night, and peace out.